Hey, we're still on day three, winding down, uh, coming to the stage next on the 21 convention, London 2011, the conference of the century, the men's conference of the century, that is, a four-time speaker. This is his fourth time on stage here at the 21 convention, and he was once voted best new instructor, and you may recognize him from MTV's Made. Please welcome, speaking on sexual escalation, Jared Syke Lawrence. Thank you. Now, all of that sounds really great when he uh, puts it all that way. But I want to go back a few short years with you guys before I was uh, psych and all that. Uh, and I want to share with you guys a story that kind of symbolizes where I was back when I first started all this. Back when I first started, I was dating uh, this girl, Gabby. Now, how I got her, I have no idea. It was literally like handed to me from God above, right? And Gabby was my everything. She was the perfect girl. That was a girl I was going to marry. That was a girl I was going to grow old with. I, my whole heart was devoted to this one girl. And Gabby didn't believe in premarital sex. And I respected that. For an entire year, we did not have sex. I was the nice guy. I was a gentleman. About a year and a half of dating her, uh, we broke up. And then in a few short months, I remember she started dating this fucking arrogant army guy, eight years older than her. And within a month, she lost it to him. I was devastated. My heart, I, I don't wish this on anyone here in this room. My heart literally went from here to my gut, right? And I thought this was maybe like, I don't know, uh, you know, a fluke or something, right? Like, it's not anything on me. Maybe it's just something that happened you know, with her. She was just a bitch to me. How could she do that to me, right? I thought maybe it's just a fluke. Well, a year later, uh, I started, uh, there's a prom going on. A uh, prom is basically a big dance that we all have in high school. And in America, it's a big deal. Because this is it. This is the night where we could lose our virginity. If we ever lost it yet, tonight's the night. And for me, this was it. This was my big moment. Because I was the last of my friends to have lost his virginity already. I was actually lying about it to all my friends. I was saying I lost it to Gabby. Because I was too ashamed of what actually happened. So at prom night, I find my girl. I, last second, I found one. And did, I believe, looking back, the only reason I was able to even get that girl was because she never got to experience a prom night. So the whole reason she was even there was just for the experience, nothing to do with me. And at prom, I take, I take her to the after party, and I get a kiss. I'm so happy. This is, this is like the greatest moment ever right now. Tonight's the night. I, my, my spirits are incredibly high, and I'm going to clown nine. Well, at the after party, I see her go outside and start smoking a cigarette, have a few drinks. And I see her start talking to this guy. I still remember his name, uh, Daniel. And she's talking to him, and they're flirting. Now I'm thinking, hell no, this can't be, you know, this is not good, right? So I go inside, I cool off a bit, I go back out. And then I see her giving him her number. And I'm like, no. no, 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 not again. This is not happening to me, not tonight. This is my night. So I go back out, and I, tell my, I look at my best friend, John, and I say, dude, go, uh, just go in there and tell her, look, I'm leaving now. She can come with or without me. And I drove her two hours. I did, I did everything for this girl to try to get her to come for this night. He goes in there, and he comes up to me, and I still remember the look. He comes right up to me, and he's like, dude, just go. I'm like, what do you mean, just go? I can't just go, right? Like, I, dro I drove this girl. He's like, no, dude, just, just leave. I'm like, why? Tell me. Like, what, why should I just leave this girl here? He's like, I just watched her walk in the bathroom with Daniel following her inside, and the door closes. Just go. And again, heart here, devastated. I found out the next day that actually is the night Daniel lost his virginity. Good for Daniel. Not me. I just, I just kept thinking 
you know, what's wrong with me? It's not a fluke anymore. Something is wrong here. Something is just utterly, inherently wrong with me. And I got into the deepest depression I've ever had in my life. Um, I look back and I don't even remember vague memories of it. I remember falling down on the floor just crying, just shattered. Um, I did, there was no community for me back then. I didn't know about this. I didn't have the answer. Uh, all I knew was I went to go see a psychologist to help myself get over this depression. And I found a specific type of psychologist. Uh, I found one I can do hypnot uh, hypnotism. And I told him, I remember point blank, I looked him in the eye, I said, sir, make me forget Gabby. And that happened. Make me forget her, she even existed. Make me forget my prom. Make me forget uh, all these bad things that have happened to me in my life. Make me forget everything. That's the extreme I was going. All because I couldn't sexually escalate. I couldn't move things forward. I could befriend some girls, maybe. That, even that was not really. <laughs> but all it came is I couldn't escalate things in a romantic level. And at the time, I remember, I told myself, I'm never going to be speaking of this to anyone. I'm never going to tell these stories because I was incredibly embarrassed. And if things hadn't changed, I wouldn't be able to stand here in front of a convention full of guys uh, with tons of people watching at home and be able to share those things with you. So no matter how bad you think things are, I want you to remember, I've been there. I know what you're going through. So that brings me to my talk here on sexual escalation. Now, when I do talk, I'm going to want to keep this uh, interactive for everybody. All right? Because I've actually, it's actually been proven that people don't learn just from a guy standing up here and talking to you, or you're just listening. You're not going to learn that way. I need participation. So you guys want to get ready for this? Yes. yes. Come on. We ju I just saw the energy in the room earlier. Come on. You guys ready for this? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Good. Participation. That's what I want from you guys. Now, I want, I'm going to put a question in your head because this is step one of understanding how to sexually escalate correctly. What is the purpose? Why do we sexually escalate? Other, obviously, yes, to get laid, to have sex with the girl, granted. But when it comes to game, it always has to be for a specific purpose of what are we trying to achieve from the girl, for the girl. What do we want to create with her? Someone. Comfort. Hmm? Comfort. Comfort, okay. Arousal. Arousal. Comfort we can do a lot of ways. And it's true, though. If you escalate correctly, she should be comfortable. And any time you escalate, you have to reserve her comfort levels. Always. Right? Uh, however, the purpose of sexually escalating in and of itself is simply to get the girl aroused. Because if she's aroused, she's going to be down. It bypasses anything. If she's aroused, does it matter if you're high value or low value if she's aroused for you? Does that matter? No. Right? Does any of the other stuff really matter? If she's aroused and she wants you, when it comes at least to sex, relationships is something different, but at least with sex, does any of the other stuff out there even matter no. if she's aroused? No. All the stuff you learn beforehand all, is just to get to this point of getting her aroused. Now, there's a big problem, though. I want to go over the inner game of sexual escalation. The number one thing stopping you guys from really getting good at this is sexual anxiety, and it's real. We all know, we have a, a lot of people here know they have approach anxiety because it's belated in your face. You see a girl, you want to go up and talk to her, but it's holding you back, it's stopping you, you're scared, you're shivering, right? Sexual anxiety, a little bit more deceiving. We can come up with new ways, right? A lot of people think, I don't really have sexual anxiety, right? I'm fine with it. Some people know it, some people do understand. But I guarantee everyone in this room has, or unless you're a speaker, uh, has or has had one of these three inner game problems. I want to stress, and I've had all three. When I started, I had every single one of these top three inner game problems when it came to sexually escalating. I'm going to uh, detail them for you, and I'm going to show you the solution. Inner game problem number one, the fear of failure after getting attraction. This was the first thing I encountered. I get the girl attracted. She's you know, giggling. She's laughing. She's looking at me longingly. Why do I want to mess this up, right? If I escalate, she could be like, no, no, I'm not interested. I don't want to uh, do anything like that. Why would I want to mess that up? It's scary. 
to have, to have worked so hard. I had to approach. I had to transition. I had to win over the friends. I had to get attraction from her. I had to get her isolated someplace. Why would I mess that up? By doing something like escalating. And it is a legitimate fear. Now, the way to get out of this, the solution is twofold. One, devalue the situation that's happening. It's not that serious. Uh, you've all heard the expression that naturalists like to use, don't put the pussy on a pedestal, right? And it's true. All it comes down to is devalue the situation. The key little rule here is don't value the girl more than she's valuing you. Why should you? Keep it equal. The other thing is invest in your game, not in the girl. Too much of us get this blinders on where we're like, oh my God, we got this one girl attracted. I can't lose it, right? I can't lose this one girl. That comes from scarcity. That's it. You get abundance. You have more women in your life. You start approaching more, right? You start getting these, uh, this area of your life handled. That goes. This one girl, right? My answer to you, my solution for this, invest in your game. Make a conscious choice now not to get blinders on with the next girl you meet. Invest in your game. Invest in yourself. Invest in the skill set that it takes to get good at this. Because if you don't, every girl you meet will be the one girl. All right, didn't work with her. Now, the one girl. Didn't work with the one girl. It's like, it's not that serious. There's lots of the one girls. There's an abundance of them, and that's the beauty of this. The only thing to worry about is the skill set. Because if I'm investing in a skill set, I can't not escalate. Because that's going to help my game. I need to mess up. I need to fail. I love failure. I love failure because the more I fail, the more I learn. If you succeed on a girl and it goes really well, OK, cool, it worked, hey, awesome. But did you learn something what not to do there? No. Failure is a, is a guide to learning correctly. Have a good relationship with it. All right, inner game problem number two. She doesn't want sex, right? This girl is not going to want sex. Look, why would this gorgeous girl over here want a big, fat, hairy slob like me flopping around on top of her? Let's be honest, right? Why would she want that? I mean, this, she's not like the other girls. This is a good girl, right? She's innocent. She doesn't do that, those nasty sex stuff that those other girls do. She's probably waiting till marriage. I don't even know anything about her. I bet she's waiting till marriage. I bet she's going to probably be a nun one day. Right? Sweetest girl ever. Never held a guy's hand before. You think like this, of course you're going to freeze out when it comes to escalating. You can't. You built her up again. So what's the solution? Assume sex. Just assume it's on. If you're wrong and you fail, good. You've now got a good relationship with failure. It doesn't matter. Assume it's on. If I'm alone with a girl, it's on. If she's in my uh, bedroom, it's on. If she's naked in my bed, you bet your ass it's on. All right? <laughs> I just assume sex. Uh, even in the beginning, I'm assuming attraction. I'm doing it for a reason. Let's say I'm right, awesome. I assume attraction, I'm right, she's into me. Let's say I'm wrong. I'm still doing the best thing for my game. I'm still doing the best thing I can do here. Because even if I'm wrong, even if I'm delusional, I'm still doing all the actions that are going to help me create the attraction by assuming it. I'm going to be more confident. I'm going to be more comfortable. I'm going to be more at ease doing what I want to do. It always helps. So be delusional. It's on. Assume sex. Assume attraction. I give you permission. Problem number three. Inner game number three. <clears throat> all right. You know, I'm not uh, afraid of failure. You know, I'm going to go for it, right? And I'm assuming sex, it's on. She wants it. Awesome. But now how do I go about it just the right way? Should I put my arm around like this? Should I try to, you know, kiss her neck? For no, 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 no. Maybe I should, like, uh, cuddle up a little bit. For no, that, that would freak her out a little bit. I should just go for it, caveman style. But then maybe I should. You start getting all this analytical shit goes through your head. I remember this. I remember lying next to a girl. She's there. She's waiting for it. I'm thinking all the, you know, how do I go about this way? How do I do it just right? You know? I have to do it just right. You don't have to do it just right. The solution is immersion. Get in the moment. Get out of your fucking head. If there's any time to be out of your head, it's now. Right? You spend all the rest of the time in your head. Get out of it. Now, how do we do that? How do we immerse ourselves in the moment? Our senses. And this was actually told to me by the psychologist who was trying to help me uh, get over my depression. He's like, just get in touch with your senses. Stop being in your head so much. 
And the idea is when a girl's there, uh, just look at her. Look how hot she looks just lying there. Listen to her breathing or listen to the things she's saying. How nice is that sound, her giggle? Smell her perfume. How good does that smell? Feel her. How nice is she? How soft is she? How good of touching is that? When you allow yourself to just experience what's going on through your senses, it cuts out the head. That's the direct line into getting in the present moment. Now, who here has not been dealing with at least one of these inner game problems? Exactly. All right, outer game. Uh, when it comes to outer game, you, the first step, obviously, is to know what are the places to touch. Where is my escalation ladder, so to speak? So can I have a volunteer? So, bam, awesome. Come up. Like I said, I want participation here. Yeah, get up. All right. So this guy is going to be my Da Vinci man. All I want you to do is bam. All right. Here's your Da Vinci man, right? Now, with a girl, the erogenous zones are here and here, right? So the farther we get away from the erogenous zones, the more comfortable the girl is with touch. So where's the farthest place we can possibly get here? The hands, right? Hands and feet. But it's a little bit weird touching people's feet so socially. So the hands. That's why when we introduce them to someone, so say hi to me. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Right? We go for the shake. What we don't do is, hey, how's it going? Hey, <laughs> right? It's just weird. You wouldn't do that. So again, Da Vinci Man. We go from hands to elbow to shoulder. Now we're going back, because again, we don't want to do front. Back. Back of the hand to stomach, middle back, lower back, legs, face and, uh, face and hair, ass, boobs, vagina. Right? Simple steps. These are the little escalation of what's the most comfortable for a girl. All right? All right, cool. You can sit down. Thank you. Now, there's two types of ways we can escalate on this girl. We can do smooth or we can get a little bit ballsy. Smooth escalation is simple. Keep going step by step, and we're making, well, step by step, and we're making sure we're preserving the girl's comfort levels at all time. If she's not liking it, we remove. If she's liking it, we escalate, right? We're always calibrating, I'm always watching. Is she tense or is she down, okay with it? Now, ballsy escalation is a little bit different. In this step, we're doing a little bit, and then we switch it up, <laughs> all right? We jump a few steps. Now, why would we want to do ballsy escalation? When would it ever be useful? It's useful for, well, okay, what do you think? Um, you're trying to go for a full massage, you want to see that down too. SNLs, perfect. If I want to do an SNL, I need to make sure at some point I'm doing some ballsy escalation. Otherwise, it's taking too much time. I want to, I want to screen and see how down she is for escalation, and I want to progress it. So that's one case. But what if we're not doing SNLs? What would be another reason? Let's say this is the girl of my dreams. Say, right? I'm not going for SNL, yeah. Okay, also screening, but why would I need to get away with stuff if I'm planning on dating this girl for a while? But it is true, that screening is a useful tool. Make her feel comfortable with it. Make her feel comfortable. Well, the, the, with Bosley Escalation, you're, it's, a, it's a Hail Mary pass, right? Basically, it's going to go bad or it's going to go well, <laughs> right? So the other reasons why you want to do this is because if she's resisting the smooth escalation of I can't breach this wall, I have to bypass it. It's a Hail Mary play, and that's the move I gotta go with. And if she accepts or she doesn't. I'm gonna show you a ballsy escalation later on kiss closing. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. On um, the other one is, let's say he's not going anywhere. Maybe I need to do something ballsy to escalate attraction because women respect that. Women want a little bit of ballsiness sometimes. If you feel things are getting, are dying down and you, you need to break rapport, if things are getting too comfortable, too boring, you need to do something to spice it up. And ballsy escalation is good. I remember I was once sitting at a club talking to this girl, but it was literally, like this was a girl, it was, I was here and she was there. Right there. Like I can't do anything. It's not a big distance. But in a club, when you're sitting down with a girl, this is the abyss of doom right here. Okay, I can't do anything. So I had to go ballsy escalation. In this case, all I did, pick her up, put her on my lap. <laughs> It could have blown up in my face, right? Thankfully, it didn't. She it instantly turned the traction on. 
She wasn't feeling me that much before. I was trying to run all this stuff, but because of the distance, it wasn't on. As soon as I did that, her eyes lit up. She's like, oh my God, most guys wouldn't do something like that. I just said, I'm not most guys. <laughs> Get a big smile on her face, and she was following me around the rest of the night. Again, one of those Hail Mary type plays. All right. Now, when it comes to escalating, I basically looked back at every single girl that I was successful with, uh, escalating-wise, and I literally broke down what I do into three key phases, or three steps, at least my nonverbal game, or my escalating game. And I realized it has a lot to do with actual psychology, so I gave it the actual psychological terms here. The first step is just comfort-based. I have to get the girl comfortable when I touch. It's, the, it's fundamental for everything with escalation. If she's not comfortable, you're not escalating, right? It's just not going to happen. I have to preserve her comfort levels. So the first step I do is touch everybody. You heard this. It's there. It's gone. I'm touching everyone. I'm getting used to the fact that I'm a touchy-feely guy. That's it. Um, some quick ways to do that uh, is to show low investment in my touch. Now, what does that look like? I need another volunteer. Bam. Up. This is the key with comfort uh, touching, low investment touch. If I'm touching with everybody, hey, man, how's it going? Hey. Hi, how are you guys doing? Oh, awesome. That's so cool, right? If I'm doing it with everyone, I'm not investing in anyone, am I? Right? Low investment. If I'm touching there and it's gone, hey, how's it going, man? Right? Hey. I'm, any one of these touches that I care about. If I'm like, hey, how's it going? Awesome. Awesome, right? Doing really well? Yeah. Really it's getting a little bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, a little tiny weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's because I'm investing a lot of my touch. Now, I could do something like this, touching him, and it's not getting as weird right now. There was some time there, but it was OK. However, if I'm explaining touching and I'm just doing this, it gets a little bit more awkward. As I stare at my hand, groping this man, right? It gets a little bit more awkward. My friend Adam really uh, emphasized this when he showed me this little move. Uh, basically, I want you to tell me as soon as you get uncomfortable with me touching you. OK. Whatever you're uncomfortable. OK. <laughs> Too little longer, right? But he got there. So I didn't even need to touch him, right? He was automatically uncomfortable. It's nothing to do with the touch. It has to do with the investment. So time. How quickly are you doing it? Are you drawing attention to it? Are you doing it with everyone? All right? And do it frequently. That's going to help you with comfort. All right, thank you. Okay. Now, uh, this, now, once the girl's comfortable, we have to get her actually wanting our touch. This is a big thing. At least back when I got started in this, they didn't really teach us. They just told us girls are going to want our touch, use it as a reward system. The next step is crucial. We have to classically condition the girl to want our touch. This is a psychological term, classical conditioning. It has to do with associations. Uh, for how many people are familiar with NLP here? NLP terms? Then you know a lot about anchoring, yeah? All right, anchoring is the same thing as classical conditioning, essentially. Uh, what I do is I'm going to boost her up with good emotions. So can I actually come my girl up here real quick? Real quick. Yeah, there she runs. All right. So, all right, hand applause for, yeah. All right. So uh, what I'll do is I'll start gaming the girl. I'll be talking to her. And then I'll get her to laugh. <laughs> all right, sorry. Try it one more time. So I'm talking to the girl, and then I get her to laugh. And I'm like, I know. How funny is that, right? And then I start escalating. And then I'll see something really interesting, and I'll get her to go, wow. Wow. I know. How cool is that, right? Oh. It's so amazing. And then I start escalating on her. Right when I see key positive emotions uh, coming with her, that's when I want to start escalating. Because she's going to associate those good emotions with my touch. Eventually, what I look for is every time I touch her, I get a smile. Bam. Now I know she's conditioned right. All right, thank you. All right. Now. Once uh, she's classically conditioned, I go into the third and final phase here. That one is operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is simply rewarding and punishing. That's it. Rewarding and punishing. So she's comfortable with my touch. She likes it now. It's something she actually wants. Now I'm going to make her work for it. Because the more investment I get, the more attracted the girl will become to me. The more she works for something, any of guys too, the more people work for something, the more they want it. It's a simple fact. So I get her investing. Every time she does stuff I like, she works for it, she invests, I'm going to reward. I'm going to amp up the escalation. When she doesn't do something I like, I start removing it. Now, here's where a lot of community guys fall into a trap. Our goal is not to punish the girl. We don't want this. 
Most of you, or most guys I've seen, will punish a girl, and they'll be like, I'm a badass. Make you come back. Come on, girl, right? That's not what it's about. I want to be rewarding because I want to keep it going forward. I want the girl happy. I want to keep it progressing. So if I do punish, I'm going to give her a smaller thing to do, a smaller hoop or something that I can then reward her on, right? That's the point. We learn through reinforcement. We don't learn through punishment. Or it's or at a very superficial level. More, way more through reinforcement, all right? So those are the key three phases. Get her comfortable. Classical conditioner. Make her associate good emotions with our touch. Use that a touch as a reward system to get her to work for more, and we keep rewarding. And it's hard. It's hard. And, the, and, it's, and it's an inner game issue why it's hard. Because when you got a girl that likes your touch, every time you touch her, she smiles and sticks her chest out a little bit more, right? To not just be like a caveman and go, yeah, she likes my touch. Oh, come here, yeah, right? And I've seen it. I've seen guys fall for this trap. They'll just start escalating like a madman because they're like, she likes it now. This is great. And then what happens? He's touching her a lot. She likes it. He's making out with her. She likes it. She starts grabbing her ass. Okay. And now she's a selector. She strips you completely. She's the one putting brakes to it now. She's the one using her uh, sexuality as a reward or not, not you. Now you're just... Please let me get something. Please give me more. Please give me more. Please give me more. All that work ruined. All right. So I showed you the three phases, phases of uh, physically escalating. But you can escalate verbally. Funny enough. How is that possible? How can we verbally sexually escalate? Well, let's go back. What's the purpose of sexual escalation? What's the purpose of sexual escalation? Arousal. Arousal. Do I actually need to touch her to achieve this purpose? No, I can use my words. I can verbally escalate. So how do we do this? Uh, one way is stories. Talk about sexual stories. Get a topic going on. Get in her head. Mindsets. How do I view sex? Funny things, uh, um, insights of sex. Her views on sex. I guarantee it'll be a much more interesting conversation than, yes, please, tell me what it's like teaching. Awesome. Oh, Johnny was a bad kid in your class? That's horrible. Wow. Much more interesting topics, right? So get the mindsets going. Qualifiers. Qualifier on sex. Give her challenges. Ask her questions that lead to more sexual context. What's the craziest thing she's ever done, right? What was your first uh, sexual experience like? If that's too much, you can go to something even simpler. When was your first kiss? What was it like? Just get her thinking in, ter in sexual terms and getting her to open up about it. Uh, something recently I've tremendously added to my game uh, within the last six months or so is uh, SOIs. I actually do them much later on. I'm doing them a lot quicker now. SOI, statements of intent. Something like, wow, I'm thinking really inappropriate thoughts about you. This is not good. Or, oh my god, you have no idea what I want to do to you right now. This is bad. I'm totally going to be kissing you later. It's, it's happening. I'm, I'm done kissing you, right? I'll start these statements of intent. Now, what happens if she doesn't accept it? What if she's like, oh, OK, yeah, you wish, or no, it's not going to happen, or whatever it is? Um, well, I've used something I stole from uh, our buddy uh, Sin. I'll just say, we'll see. <laughs> right? We'll see. I'm very charming. Or, uh, we'll see. The night's still young. <laughs> totally just devalidate it. So, I'm going to throw in those uh, oh, SOIs to sexually charge it. She knows what I'm about. I'm not hiding anything. Uh, and finally, dirty talk. One of the most powerful ways to turn a girl, get a girl aroused, dirty talk, if you do it properly. Uh, a lot, if you're like me, back in the day, you know, you used to experience a lot of LMR. Who here has or is currently experiencing LMR? Right? I, used to, I know I did. When I was trying to get into this, I have LMR all the time. Well, the way LMR works is you try to escalate on the girl, and she pushes it away. Right? It doesn't happen. So you try to escalate again. No. Try to escalate again. No. Not happening. Can't touch this. Well, how would you guys like to know a way you can sexually escalate that she can't stop? She can't turn it down, right? Dirty talk. She can't stop that. She can't shut me up. Unless she like verbally takes a pillow and like goes, no, stop talking dirty talk to me. No, right? She can't stop it. I might not be able to start doing all the things I want to do, but I can talk about them. I can paint a picture. I can get her thinking about it, visualizing it, experiencing it emotionally. And the more I dirty talk, I'm, I just keep going and going and going until I hear those five magic words. You guys want to know what those words are? What? Well, not three. <laughs> Do you have a condom? <laughs> All right? 
Five magic words. I will dirty talk till I hear those five words. Done. LMR. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, let's get into some fun little tactics you guys can use uh, when you go out tonight, whenever you're out there. Uh, how to sexually escalate properly. Some fun little moves that you guys can get to see what it's about. Okay, can I have the lovely assistant up again? <laughs> yeah, you. Or the other cute girl. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Stand over here real quick. All right. Now, the first thing is sexual eye contact. The biggest thing you want to create with a girl is sexual tension. That's number one. The more sexual tension you create, the more aroused she's going to get. So we can use our eyes for this. Now I can look, so I just want you to tell me how you feel, come here. All right, so I can look at her normally, right? And I want you to tell me if you've noticed any difference when I start talking, okay? So normally, mm -hmm. all right? All right, see, I got a little giggle. All right, I'm gonna hold my hand up, right? I want you to tell me or just mention as soon as you feel a little bit of a difference. Okay. <laughs> all right, no. all right. It just transfers. Now, I don't know how I can break this down. Or like Maybe it's minute eye muscles going on, but I can explain what it feels like, how I go about this, the, sex, the right sexual eye contact. I'm not thinking any sexual thoughts. I'm feeling sexual emotion. I'm literally feeling the, that emotion you get when you look at a girl and you're like, I want that, right? It's just, I want that. If you do it with a guy, it should feel uncomfortable. So try it real quick right now. Just look at the guy next to you and try it. And it'll work if you get them to feel uncomfortable. Try it. <laughs> See if you can do it. <laughs> Literally, look in her eyes and be like, I want that. <laughs> All right? Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> you guys getting what it's a little bit about? Yeah, I'll give you a hint. Now, guys, All right, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. When you, when you look in someone's eyes, quickly, just, just normally, just normally, look in your, the per partner's eyes real quick. Real quick. What eye did you look at? Which one of their eyes? Right? You're left, right? You look at the left. They're right, left, right? I look at that eye. The intimate one's over here on your right. When you go like that, this side of this eye, much more intimate. So when I want to get sexual escalate, I change it up. I look at her, I look at the right eye or her left, right? Uh, so if this is normal. I'll switch it here and get a little bit more intimate. And maybe my eyes narrow a little bit, maybe a little bit of a cocky smile there, whatever it is. Now we can even amp this up more. We got the sexual eye contact down. Let's create more sexual tension. The first way we can do is changing the tone. She's like, get ready for it. <laughs> She's like, OK, get, get ready. <laughs> All right, so we get the eye sexual eye contact down. Now, the next thing to do is change the voice tonality. We start slowing it down. We make everything smoother, change our voice. Basically, we're doing bedroom talk. All right, so once the sexual eye contact's down, she made me laugh a little bit. All right. Once the sexual eye contact's down, our voice changes. It gets more deeper, slower than the space. You come in. Now, notice the distance from here. Any guy, this creates massive awkward tension. If, it's, if it feels awkward with a guy, it's sexual with a girl, if she's attracted. If she's not attracted, it gets a recoil emotion, like, whoa, not ready for it. Why? Because she's not even so much of an attraction thing. It's because she's not comfortable. And if you get that, all, for example, if I come in, I try getting sexual and she gets freaked out or tense, you just back off. Preserve comfort levels, just back up. And then start trying again. All time preserving comfort levels. But those three things, massive sexual tension. The eye contact, watching my voice change, and getting slower, get, uh, building, uh, bridging the gap between us. All right? Uh, usually this takes place uh, when you're isolated with a girl. All right, next thing, uh, clubs. I'm not hugely like clubs or anything, but in Miami, that's pretty much the entire scene. Everything's a club type scene. So I got really good at it. And what I've used, I found a way to make, turn lemons into lemonade. Because the club scenes is tough, but there's ways to, uh, that it helps you. For example, who likes loud music in a club? You like the loud music, right? Most people actually don't, funny enough, because they can't talk that much, right? It sucks. Loud music, I can't talk. I use it to my advantage. So I want you to come up like you're talking to me. All right. Now, notice where she stopped. I didn't, I didn't tell her to stop here. Perfectly, arm's distance. This is the perfect place of personal space. There is a bubble right here. It's unspoken, but she just knows. 
arm's distance. This is the perfect place to stop. In a club, you can't. We would not be able to talk to each other. In a club, I have an advantage. I can breach personal space very quickly. So let me go on this side, actually. In a club, when we come up and talk to her, we could say, hey, I'm like, huh, what? I come in and I talk like this. I immediately go into that moment. I'm not doing this. Most guys are scared as hell. They'll just go, huh, what, what, right? Instead of pecking, I can say, stand up straight and go me like this. Hey. Hey, right? Now, it gives me an excuse to get personal space and notice where my hand goes immediately. It'll go right here. Because there's two pressure points on a girl that help cause arousal. There's one right here where I squeeze that, and there's one on the bottom of the foot. So if I give her a foot massage back at home, you usually get this oh, reaction, right? So it's that and here. So that helps me, the side squeeze. Go in, squeeze her side, talk to her. I get a breach personal space very quickly. Uh, the next thing, if I'm already kissing a girl and I want to amp it up even further, I can put her in a submissive frame. Now, I'm not trapping her in this. I'm just putting her, I'm guiding her in a submissive frame. She's still, com it's still completely her choice and she feels comfortable to leave at any moment. So what do I do? Uh, submissive frame for, the guy, for a girl is hands above head. When a girl's hands are above her head, she's automatically in a submissive frame. So what I might do is if I'm talking to the girl and I'm already escalating, I push her against the wall and then I would guide her arms up like that and then kiss. <laughs> now, if she's not feeling, now notice what I'm not doing is this. I'm not holding it, right? <laughs> I'll guide the arms up while kissing and put the hands above the head. Now, if she wants to get off, so I'm just trying to get away. Okay. Right? Totally easy. I'm not holding the hands. I'm just like this. Right? So move out. Easy. I'm not holding it. There's nothing forced about this. I'm just simply guiding up. Usually you want to do that after you've already kissed her. Or like right before. If you want to get a little bit ballsy with it, right? Because it just puts them more into that submissive frame. It's a primal reaction to it. I'm not, there's no, nothing about like misogynistic. It's just sexually men should be the dominant ones. Women should be submissive in a sexual sense. Uh, the other one, the back, is it coming again? Back scratch. Uh, this one actually be behind. But if I'm talking to a girl, no, you facing me. Okay. So if I'm talking to, so I'm talking to a girl, and uh, whatever, I can rake my nose across her back to amp it up a bit. I'm not like massively scratching her, just a bit of a scratch, right? Uh, Fuji had another little nice one where like if, if they get things going a little bit, he can ask a girl to give him a scratch here. You know, she scratches your back or something, just to get her escalating on you a bit. Uh, personally, I like to just, again, it's kind of a screener also. I want to see how down she is. While we're talking or something, I'm, I'm rubbing, I'm playing with the back, the little finger stuff here. And then out of nowhere, I just rake. And I can see what her reaction is. Did it get a smile like, ooh? Or is it like, whoa, tense, again, tense, back up, preserve comfort levels. All right? Uh, another one, day two. This is one I use on uh, pretty much every day two I have. Uh, so let's say we're here and we're walking along. We're arm in arm, we're walking along. All of a sudden I go, wow, you have an amazing ass. Like, look, at, look at that ass right here, right? And then she gets embarrassed, and then she turns, like hiding the ass. And I go, even better. Oh my God, right? Now she doesn't know what to do. <laughs> hold this, hold that, I don't know what to do. At this point, just hug her and go, no, it's okay, you know? That's it. We're walking along and go, oh my God, what an amazing ass. Stop, no, even better. <laughs> All right? Every time. Without fail, you just do that every day too. Another one I do on every day too is we'll be walking. Along. This is kind of mean, but I just do it for more for fun. We're walking along, and let's say I want to like spice it up. We're getting too boring, datey frame because a lot of first dates get kind of boring. I'll see something like a little Bush and be like, "Oh yeah, be my friend Bush," <laughs> and then really bring her back and like just like I'm joking with her, right? Uh, usually they'll punch me in the arm, or they tease me, I will tease them back. I don't do that everyone. That's more for amusement. Uh, hair grab. Most girls, uh, most guys have learned to pull a girl's hair. And I've seen him do horrible things with this move. Horrible things. I've seen girl, guys just like, pull, hey, right? And a girl's like, what the fuck? I've, li I've literally saw a student, I kid you not, I've literally saw a student pull a girl's hair and she goes, what the fuck was that? Like, she freaked out. All right? So I'm removing this from the uh, whole community doctrine, the whole idea of hair pull. It is now officially called hair grab. Okay? It is a different. I'm not pulling shit. All right? And I put my hands up here and I grab. I'm sorry, see? Yeah, it's a nice little happy face. That's what I want. I want to uh, up there, grab. Right? Think about you. It's the same, same feeling. If someone put their hand on your head and grabbed your hair, pull, pulled your hair down, I'd be like, what the fuck? Right? Well, this guy's like, I can't experience that. But all right, ball guys aside, <laughs> ball men aside, uh, when most people put in their hair and just squeeze it, or hair squeeze, hair grab. 
Uh, the last one, now this is, I warn you now, this is an advanced technique, not for the faint of heart. If you have any kind of pregnancy issues or heart conditions, do not do this. <clears throat> I call this the cause you're wet routine. It's something I actually developed for my ex-girlfriend. Uh, all right, so this is basically after you've uh, kissed a girl, you've made out with her, whatever, and you want to see if she's ready to come home with you that night. At this point, I look at a girl and I say, I can totally tell you want me right now. And usually they get this cocky look, like how, like, how can you tell? Or like, why is that? I'll take my hand, and I'll put it out, and I'll just slide a finger right between her legs. And I go, because you're wet. Oh. And I see the, <laughs> I see it. <laughs> now, I see the, <laughs> of course not a respectable girls like this, but, no, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> but I watch the reactions, right? And usually the jaw just drops. You don't even know what to do. The jaw just drops, and then escalation becomes a joke. Uh, from that, it's, it's normal to pull within the next five, 10 minutes. If she's, if she's receptive and she's there talking to you right after that, you're good to go. Um, the funniest reaction I've had for that is I did that to a girl, and she's like, please, you can't tell I'm wearing jeans. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like granted, I'll check again, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you can just start playing with it a little bit. <laughs> All right, uh, now for the kiss closing, right? I talked to you about a little bit of sexual tension. Actually, can I have a guy come up here also with the girl? Yeah. Bonte, there you go, thank you, round of applause. Good, thank you. All right. Now, how do you know when it's okay to kiss a girl? I have the distance test. For the distance test, I basically go, what distance do I have to be where it'd be gay talking to a guy? So right now, is this comfortable talking to you? Perfect. All right, about here. Not bad. Not bad. It's a bit invasive. A bit of invasive, right? At this, usually it's about three hand, uh, hand spaces is awkward distance for a guy. If it's gay, if it's like this, yeah. it's just awkward. So if I can get a girl about this distance, and I can talk to her, and she's comfortable, and she's smiling, and it's, I feel that it's on, if I can wait 10 seconds with that dynamic going, uh, it's on. I'll go for the kiss. There's no gambit. There's no routine. There's no little trickery. I'm just seeing, I'm, I'm basically watching her comfort levels, her attraction levels, how well is it on. Uh, now, what if, okay, thank you, sit down. Thank you, guys. Now, no, you're still up. Uh, I t promise you a ballsy escalation uh, thing if the girl, uh, for a kiss, right? So I'm going to go for a kiss, and I want you to act like you're not really attracted to me and just reject me, okay? okay. All right, I know, yeah. So I'm going to go for the kiss. You're going to reject me by turning your head that way. So I go for the kiss, boom, right? Now, I don't get her lips. I can't kiss her like this. But she also gives me her neck, right? I can work with that. If I go for the kiss, I get rejection, I can start kissing her neck. Again, it's a ballsy escalation move. I just bypass, I just go on to the next steps. Uh, from there, I can escalate e uh, even more so. Uh, now, what about the dance floor? Because it's a different dynamic here. On the dance floor, we're already like, really close with each other, right? I can't do the distance test because it's, not, it's already socially appropriate to be that close. In this case, I need a new indicator. I need a new way of seeing, you know, is it down or is it not? And for this, I use the forehead to forehead. If she's willing to dance with me by pushing her forehead to my forehead, and we can dance like that, she's ready to be kissed. That's the compliance I'm looking for. If it's forehead to forehead, she's ready to be kissed. All right, you can sit down. Thank you. Hand applause. <laughs> so I basically broke down the inner game of going with you guys. I showed you the outer game, step by step, of what to do. I gave you some fun, useful tactics you can use tonight. Is that helpful to anyone? Yeah. 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 Is that helpful? Yeah. All right. Now, I have a really exciting announcement I want to make with you guys. All right. The announcement I want to make is that just recently, I have teamed up with who I consider the single best infield coach I've seen uh, today. Uh, I look at it as like the team up of Superman and Wolverine. Uh, obviously, Fuji would be Wolverine, because she's right? But, <laughs> but uh, no, DJ Fuji is literally the best I've seen uh, today. And because you guys are here at the uh, 21 convention, uh, DJ Fuji and myself have put together something uh, really special for you guys for tonight. Here's what you guys are going to get. Over four hours of hands-on personal infield coaching by the two of us. You're not getting some unknown instructor. There's no local lair guy. Uh, some little uh, unknown little uh, local air guy who's going to be coaching with us. 
It's not even just the, oh, the senior coaches. It's myself or Fuji with you guys at all times, uh, making sure that you guys are doing everything right. You're going to also get something that no other company uh, is currently using. You're going to get hidden microphone up. You're going to get hidden mics. That way, we get to not just see what you guys are doing. I'm not just going to vaguely have an understanding of, oh, I'm watching this body language. I think this is what's going on. I'm going to hear not only everything you say, but everything that the girl says as well. I'm improving your nonverbal game just as much as your verbal game now. Not only that, we are going to do a full debrief. It is not uncommon that we take our guy. We do it, uh, DJ Fuji used to be the Marine, and since working with him, uh, we've basically literally gone Marine style on you guys. We take you guys out. It's not uncommon to be out till 7 in the morning fucking debriefing you on everything that happened that night because we're there taking notes the entire time. We're taking notes on everything you've done right, you've done wrong, and we're breaking it down for you. There's no vague, yeah, your body language needs to be a little corrected. There's no, oh, just do a lot more sets. You're going to be fine. You're doing great. While most companies will pat you on the back and say, hey, you did amazing at the end of the night, no. Debrief. I want you to learn. Because it's not about tonight. It's about every single night afterwards. That's what it's going to be about. And we want to make sure on the debrief that not only do you know every little thing that what you went wrong and went right, but you have a game plan on how to keep getting better. You have a game plan of what to do next in your, in your development. And that's why we will get results where others have failed. I've heard the horror stories of guys who have had un- uh, successful boot camp experiences or have had really just bad experiences out there and it sucks but that's why we get results where others have failed now in fact we're gonna th I'm gonna throw in another bonus with you guys as well on top of this uh, we're gonna do a half hour one-on-one -on -one video coaching call with you after today after the fact all right uh, just to make sure you are implementing everything that we've taught you uh, tonight. I want to make sure that you guys are taking this to the next level and help you with your progression, help you and guide you continuously. All combined, what would this all be worth? It's about $1,700. Today, we're doing it for 597 pounds. However, uh, if you sign up in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to knock 100 pounds off of that. If you're, really, if you're ready uh, to invest in your game and you want to make, invest in yourself, if you're ready to invest in yourself and, gu and guide yourself forward, uh, we're going to knock 100 pounds off, uh, so 497. Now, here's my promise. Here's my little my guarantee for you guys. If it is not worth every single penny, if, in fact, if it doesn't succeed what you expect for tonight, you pay zero. I don't want to dime from you. If I don't exceed your expectations, Zero. Is that a deal or what? Yeah. Nope. All right, I'm psyched. Thank you for your time. Hey guys.